What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. This is Cross and today we're going to be talking about how to do uh, camera transitioning in Blender. There's three different ways that I want to show you guys. Uh, so let's open that up and uh, you'll see right away that we have three separate cameras. We have one here, one down here, and one right here. And I'm going to show you from a third person perspective what the transitions will look like and then I'm going to show you from the actual camera view what they'll look like. Uh, and two of them will look like not much is happening. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play this here real quick. All right. So it may not have looked like a whole lot was happening there, but all three uh, methods were used for camera transition. Uh, well, actually, two of them were used automatically. One of them you would have to manually do. Uh, so let me actually hit zero on the number pad, and this goes into the first camera. And how you can tell that it's the camera that's active is it will be this black triangle here, okay? So you'll notice that as you get a little further into the animation, the black triangle grows from here to right there. That means that this is now the active camera. What that looks like from the actual camera view is this. So you play it, pans down, switches, and then the camera cuts a couple of times and that real quick two cut kind of thing is, is a combination of um, two of the different methods that I'm about to show you. Uh, but anyway, so let's actually open a new project. And no, I don't, I don't need that. Okay, so when you start off, let's let's say that this cube for the sake of argument is, is just two characters having a conversation and this is the camera view that you have um, on, on them. Like however you have your scene set up, this is, this is your main camera. Now, the first way that you could do a transition is to simply move the camera whenever you want the cut. So, starting here, let's say that you want the camera to start here. So, hit N to open the uh, transform panel over here and on the keyboard. And how you would do this first method is by keyframing the location and rotation of the camera. So, let's say uh, on frame one, you want the camera to be starting here you would hover over the location right here and hit I. You'll see it highlight yellow, and then there's a little keyframe down here now. Uh, you would do the same for the rotation. Okay, so I, and then I over that as well. Uh, it won't look like another keyframe has shown up, but if you, if you go off of this, you see both of these turn green. When you go back to frame one, they're both yellow again. So that means that both of those things are actually keyframed. Then what you could do, if you wanted to create a quick cut, not like a smooth transition, like how the first one I had, you would go to whatever frame you want it to be cut to. So let's say for instance, um, if you were for, uh, rendering out at 60 frames per second, so one second in you want the transition to happen, you would go to 60 and then go back one frame. And the reasoning for this is because if you were to just, if you were to go to 60 and then render it um, with the, like keyframe the next location, and then render that out, it would be that smooth transition, like at the beginning of the video, and you don't want that, you want a quick cut. So what you would do is you would go to the frame that you want the cut to occur, go back one frame, and keyframe these again. All right, so now for this entire duration down here, as you'll see, you have the keyframe and rotation, uh, or you have the location and the rotation keyframed, I'm sorry. Can't really talk today. Uh, anyway, once you have that step, then you go to the next frame and that is when you would move your camera. So you could move it to here, and then hit R to rotate it, and aim it more at the camera, and then you'll see that these values are now changing, or well not the values, but you're moving the camera and the colors are changing and everything like that. So then you could pull this down to about there. R to rotate on the X axis, because you don't want it to be oddly uh, angled. And then you could check the camera to make sure and, and it, you would know exactly how you want it to be situated um, but yeah so then once you have the new location on frame 60 you would hover over everything again it doesn't matter where in this that you hover just make sure you're hovering somewhere here hit I and hit I again for the rotation so now if you zoom in here you have the two different keyframes and if you go back one frame it's right over here so what that would look like from the third person person perspective is starting from frame 1 to 59 it would play boom quick cut just like that that is the first method 
and you'll see too if I actually go into the camera view with uh, zero on the numpad and then I play that as soon as it hits that frame boom immediate cut so like I said that's the first method method the second one and I'm actually going to uh, delete all these keyframes here oh snap I accidentally deleted the camera that's not what I wanted I don't know why that... Oh, uh, I think I was hovering over this window when I did it. Okay. That makes sense, which is why I would also delete the keyframe. Uh, yeah, so when you hit delete, just make sure you're hovering over the keyframe window and not over the object window because it will delete the camera. Anyway, second method. Hypothetically, you've got camera one here. Shift A to create your second camera. And then pull it back. All right, now we want the rotation on the x-axis to be zero. So it's, whoops, sorry, not zero, 90. So that it's looking right at the cube, okay? And how this one would work is, let's say from frame one to 59, you want it to uh, render from this angle here. And then on frame 60, you want it to cut there. This is the second method. What you would do is with your camera here, you would render the first 59 frames. All right, then you would stop the rendering. You would click on this camera, hit Control Zero. Oh, wait a minute, let's make that zero because that's kind of okay. No, that's that's what it's supposed to be zero. All right, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, so start starting starting over from here. So you would render the first 59 frames, one through 59, using this camera. You would stop the rendering. Then you would manually switch this to the active camera. So like I said earlier, that black triangle means this is the active camera. What you would do is after the first 59 frames are rendered, you go to frame 60, you make sure this is the camera selected and you hit control zero. That would make this the active camera. Or you could go to Okay, I'm not sure where it went, but there's a way that you could manually do it. Yeah, okay, so if you um, have space as the way to type stuff in and search for stuff, you could hit that, type in camera, and then set active object as camera. It does the exact same thing as control zero. That's what you see the quick hotkey is. Um, but if you don't remember control zero, then, then you can just type it in and, and search for it. Anyway, so after you have this as the active camera, you would just render from frame 60 onward. Uh, and that is the second method. However, once you start getting into longer scenes where there's a lot of different cuts and everything, you could have like 15 different cameras littering the scene and it could all become very confusing very quickly. So instead, well, no, because that would happen with the third method too. All right. Forget what I just said. Method three. What you would want to do is, if this one was starting as your main camera, you would come down here, and while you're in the timeline view, you would hit M. Or you could go to marker, add marker. Um, and then what you would do is you would bind the camera to this marker. Uh, and how you would do that is, normally it's control B, but for some reason, when I type that, it doesn't work. So what I did is I just hovered over and typed in bind camera to markers, and then you'll see this little camera icon pop up. Then you go to whatever frame you want it to occur. So frame 60, you would click uh, on this camera now. M again, make this the active camera, and then space, Find camera and you'll see that this one says camera this one says camera dot zero zero one that's because up here that is the name of the two different cameras um, now the way markers work is that it doesn't make the switch between cameras until that frame so for the first 59 frames it would still be your first camera so which is if you were trying to transition the camera on the 60th frame one second in that's exactly how you would want it so for the entire 59 frames, it would be this camera, and then once it hits 60, 
you see the triangle went down to this camera. Uh, so that is the third method of how to do camera transitions. It's probably the easiest and the fastest one too. Um, but like I was saying earlier, it still involves having multiple cameras and you know if you get into longer scenes then it could become very complicated very quickly and unless you have these detailed and titled appropriately you could find yourself uh, getting confused as to which one's which. A simple way to get around that would just be to click on the camera and then go about your stuff, do your thing, but if you've got a large scene you're trying to model a bunch of stuff and all these cameras are getting in the way it could become annoying, just hide them. Hit H to hide. If you need to bring it back, Alt H. Anyway, guys, that is how you do quick camera transitions, three different methods. I hope that helped. If it did, go ahead and drop a like on the video and hit the sub button and the little bell. That way you are notified for whenever I release future videos. Other than that, I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.